The distribution of a quantitative variable refers to how the values of that variable are spread or distributed along the number line. To understand the characteristics of units in our study, we measure these characteristics to obtain data and then examine the properties of the distribution of these data. One property of interest is the center of the distribution. There are two ways we define center. The median is the middle of a distribution. It is the point that has half of the distribution above it and half of the distribution below it. We can calculate the median as a descriptive statistic. Here's a list of 15 scores. The median is the middle score in an ordered list of scores. I've already put these scores in order. The score of 9 has 7 scores below it and 7 scores above it. Therefore, the median is 9. What if we have an even number of scores? Here's an example. There are 16 scores, so the middle of this set of scores would be in between the 8th and the 9th score in the ordered list, that is, in between 9 and 11. Well, logically enough, we take halfway between 9 and 11 and say that the median is 10, even though 10 is not actually in our list of scores. There is another way to define the center of a distribution, and that is the center of gravity. We call this the mean. Many people know it as the average. Let's look at this list of scores. I've created a histogram for these scores. There are 16 scores. Now the median would be the point at which there are 8 scores below it and 8 scores above it. The score of 10 has 8 scores below it and 8 scores above it, so that's the median. Now if I were to try to balance this distribution on my finger with my finger at the median of 10, the distribution would topple over to the right. Why? Because 10 is not the center of gravity. There are some extreme scores out on the right end of the distribution. I would need to move my finger toward those scores. Here's where I would need to put my finger to balance the histogram. This is the mean. Now this distribution will balance. Using the median as the definition of center, every score has equal value. Using the mean as the definition of center, scores that are substantially different than other scores in the distribution will have more influence. Think about putting a light child on a teeter-totter. You want them to be able to play with an older and heavier child or even an adult. What do you do? You put the child further out on the end of the teeter-totter because that will give them more influence. That's what happens with scores that are further away from the main group of scores. So how did I calculate this center of gravity that we call the mean? Here's the formula. If you're seeing this for the first time and are a little bit nervous about mathematics, relax. Let's break this down into pieces that we can understand. On the left-hand side of the equal sign, we see a Y with a bar over it. In fact, the way we refer to this symbol is Y bar. We use Y bar as the symbol for the mean. This tells us we're looking at the formula for the mean. On the right-hand side of the equal sign, we see how to calculate the mean. Look at the top or numerator of the fraction. There is a large, ominous-looking symbol here. That symbol's a capital Greek letter called sigma. In statistics, we use capital sigma to mean add them up. That is, we use this symbol like an adding machine. Here we are asking to add up all the values of y. I've done that. 
and I found that these values add up to 233. Now you already know that the letter N stands for the size of a sample. In other words, the number of pieces of data. With N in the bottom of the fraction, the denominator, this means that we have to divide by N after we have added up all the scores. So I've done that too. The mean of this set of scores is 14.6. We can also say that the mean of the distribution, which is pictured here in this histogram, is 14.6. Sometimes we're interested in the center of gravity, even if it is influenced by extreme scores. In that case, we want to use the mean. Sometimes there are no extreme scores in our data in which case both the mean and the median are fine measures of center and will have values close to one another. In a perfectly symmetrical distribution, the median and mean are the same. In some situations, we do not want extreme scores to influence our center, so we would use the median. The median is not influenced by extreme scores. This makes it a valuable statistic for skewed distributions. One of the best examples I can think of to demonstrate this is annual income in the United States. When we talk of annual incomes between, say, 20,000 and 200,000, we're talking about most workers. Yet there is also a small percentage of people who make millions of dollars each year. This results in a skewed distribution with a few extreme incomes that can influence the mean income. If I want to convey the center of the distribution for annual income, I shouldn't use the mean. Readers of my report would get the wrong impression regarding the income of American workers. The median is going to be a better statistic to use because the data are skewed. The mean and the median both have their place in helping us understand the center of a distribution of data. Understanding the properties of data distributions is an excellent first step in helping us begin to answer research questions.